Hey guys, this is Peter, and this week I had the opportunity to take a look at a new TV tuner. This one's from GT Media, and it supports ATSC 3.0 with DRM. Now, what does that mean? Well, ATSC 3.0 is the new standard for high definition television, or next generation TV, it's often called. And what it promises is, well, a better broadcast signal and higher, well, better picture quality. So uh, the problem with ATSC 3.0, as soon as it came out, a kind of overlooked feature of the new spec was all of a sudden invoked. And that's DRM, or Digital Rights Management, which means the people that own the content chose to invoke a feature that was encryption and to protect their content. So that meant that many of the tuners that were on the market were unable to receive these channels. And well, that all of a sudden slowed everything down. Well, this is the first box that I reviewed. Uh, it's from GT Media and it's called the Converter X1. And yeah, it supports DRM. Get In fact, mics. it is certified. You go to their, they have a really good half. form, by the way. Of course, you can yeah, click on the perfect. top one. He's that's the Converter the X1. One. And yeah, you will find posted December 11th of this year, they have certification for ATSC 3.0. This is from the third party that did the certification and it lists the name. HDTV Converter X1 from GT Media. There you go. Also on this forum, you will find a couple useful sites. Here's one, it's called Antenna Web, and you put in your local area. I put in San Francisco or San Jose, and it brought me the San Francisco channels. And it was able to show me what I'm gonna get for next gen. Two, four, five, seven. Okay, those are all good channels. Two, four, five, seven, eleven, which is good, that's NBC and Spanish channel, uh, Univision, uh, so 14. So there you go, one, two, three, four, five. Now there's another program or website, I'll put the link down to this one too. This is called Rabbit Ears and it just lists out how ATSC is evolving. But of course I hit Alt F and typed in San Francisco because those are where my channels are from. And look, the same list of channels, two, four, five, seven, 11 and 14. But look at the difference. Some of those you'll notice are a salmon color with a lock next to it. Those are the ones with DRM or digital rights management. This box will allow you to receive, watch, record, and even play back that content. But it does so on an external drive. And when you plug it into something else, you can no longer view it. So I struggled with how to review this because I've been running TV boxes since I guess 2009. So, all along the way, they've been a network appliance, which means you didn't plug them directly into your TV, you plug them into your network. Had a really great benefit in the fact that I could now watch TV on all sorts of devices, tablets and phones. Not so with this one. However, this one does work the way that most people expected it to, just like your cable box. <laughs> your antenna goes in here, your network goes in here, and guess what, it plugs into your TV. So yeah, this network connection is actually just used for data. So the programming data is free and there's nothing else to buy. However, oh, and you can also get it over Wi-Fi. I did notice something though. If you try to get Wi-Fi to work, make sure you don't have it plugged into ethernet. It'll make it seem like it's complaining about your password. It's not working properly. You have to unplug the ethernet and then it'll work. That's a rather interesting error. It should give you a proper error and say, hey, you know, you're already plugged in or just accept it either way. But uh, I did test out everything on this box and that was one of the things I found. So most people, when they would look at other TV tuners that I had reviewed in the past, they'd say, where do you plug it into your TV? <laughs> so, and then how do you control it? Well, this one answers both of those questions. There, you plug in your antenna here, you plug it into your TV here and you control it using a remote. That's kind of new. So this one does have some cool features to it, including this section up here, which allows you to control your TV. The sticker on the back is removable, but it'll tell you how to do that. And that works rather well. You ha you'll have your ability to turn the TV on and off, volume up and down, and change your input. And that's really most of what you need. So uh, let's go over some of the differences here. The good news is it does support DRM and it does support it well. Uh, it connects directly to your TV and you now finally have a remote. It is DRM certified and now you can watch, record and play content that is even encrypted. You can surf channels with this and that was a cool feature. And when you hit the button up and down, it actually goes through the different channels and that's kind of nice. A lot of people wanted that capability. 
Uh, it's the way we used to watch TV. Non-DRM recordings are portable, meaning if you plug in a USB flash drive, you can pull content off and use it as you will. The one stuff that has DRM, I'll show you, you can see it. You will not be able to play it off the device. So programming is free and there's nothing else to buy. However, some of the things we were used to are different. One of the things is, I thought this was a dedicated device. It boots up like a dedicated device, like it's the only thing it does. But this is actually an Android box, which seems like a bonus. But really, it's Android running an app. Now, I guess it is a bonus because I could run things like YouTube or Hulu or Spotify on this box, and that seems great. However, the world is at Android 14 right now, and this box is at Android 11. And sure, they could post an update, but you wonder, Android 11, 12, 13, where, where's the update? So are you guaranteed an update? Will this box someday be stranded? I don't know. Android file structure, that's another bummer. Here, let me show you how it stores stuff on your drive. I open up my files, go to my PC, and here is my Lexar drive, there. This is where it stores its files. And it put all of these uh, file structure there. So this is Android's file structure. So where do you think the TV programs are? Do you think they're in movies? How about downloads? Documents? How about pictures? Are they under the DCIM? No, let me take you to them and you can kind of see. Under Android, under data, under com.zva3mobile.lte Android, under files, under HDTV DVR, there you go. There's the different programs. And using the box, I was able to name, rename this one. I watched the Army-Navy game. Looked quite great, by the way. Really fun game to watch. And I was able to change the name. Let me show you what the file structure looks like in something that's not encrypted. There. It's a media.ts file. It's a single file, and it's the entire recording. Look, you click, click on it. This was the Waltons or something. All right, so it plays quite well. And yes, VLC will play these back. And I have this program, Video Converter. I click on Convert. I drag the files in. Here we drag a file in. Boom. It converts it no problem. It has no problem converting this. And it will convert it, in this case, to an MP4. So yes, I truly can liberate the stuff that was not uh, encrypted. So just like a VCR, you can record stuff and keep it. Uh, the stuff that is encrypted, let's go back to the Army-Navy game. Look at this. A bunch of file types, and you think, well, it's in pieces, but maybe I can still use it. No, you can't play any of these. It's non-playable. You click on them, and nothing's going to happen. Nothing good, that is. Actually, nothing happens. Uh, but uh, that's the difference. So you can tell which stuff I recorded. The Crimes TV, I can play that. It's going to be a media.ts file. I like the, the way it, it organizes things, it names things, but the stuff that has DRM comes up with this. It's the call center, it's the timestamp. Here, all of these are just gonna be blah inside. So I can't play these, replay these outside of the box. I can plug it back into the box and watch it, but there is the DRM. That's why I believe that certification is true because it actually is respecting the the wishes of the people that have encrypted the stuff. You can't get around it. It is pretty well encrypted. So uh, the Android file structure is a, a little bit of a negative. The TS file type was a little bit of surprising. Oh, I'd say the biggest downer is we're used to pausing and rewinding live TV. If I'm watching something and I gotta go grab a water break or something, you can hit pause on most of the TV tuners that are out. This one, it doesn't. There's a pause button, but it doesn't work. Uh, also, you can't rewind, and that was a little bit disappointing. But uh, this does fit a need, and the need is it's a simple, think of it as a, a cable box without the cable. Plug in your antenna, grows directly to your TV, gives you a remote, allows you to watch beautiful broadcast picture, and uh, on that individual TV. Oh, and you can record. That's great. Uh, let's see. Yeah, not a network appliance. So what people were expecting from ATSC 3.0 is a better picture and more channels because you're going to have a stronger signal. So I did a channel scan and I am a good 60 miles away from San Francisco. I have a very good antenna and I 
got about the same number of channels. I'm going to say exactly the same number of channels. And I think because of the the size of the broadcast, because of all the data coming, the buffering is actually longer in ATSC 3.0. And the experience, the picture is good. You can't deny it. But look, I get over I think 180 channels. And what am I looking at that's encrypted right now? One, two, three. And I get these in ATSC 1.0. This is just a much better picture. So there you go, guys. Hey, ATSC 1.0, no one ever utilized that properly. You were able to get some really good, I think it was 1080i you could go up to broadcast wise, but just nobody ever did it. Why? Because they're not going to give you anything for free. The reason that they're after this is because they can control their content now. So the thing is, not only can they control where you watch it, they can control how long you own it for because it's encrypted. So there you go, guys. ATSC 3.0 is out, is working, is now certified, and the price isn't bad. It's a great little device. It's just, is it going to fit your needs? There you go, guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Give this thumbs up if it helped, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.